Hi, I'm a Smurf, and today's uh, Bible <laughs> lesson. <laughs> Let me adjust the lighting. Okay, I think that's a little better, don't you? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, guys. I'm trying to find something to laugh about. Uh, our world is a wreck, and uh, and it's our misunderstanding of God. Um, I have a friend who's actually in Israel. <clears throat> His name is Moshe, which means Moses. But this morning he was talking about... Um, how God's name is spelled wrong, pronounced wrong. All these, uh, all these things that I think that God honestly doesn't care about. And the reason why I would say that <clears throat> is because, number one, God said if you come to give your offering, and um, but you have a problem with your brother, leave your offering and go fix it up with your brother. He made it very important that you know um, t for us to understand the importance of relationships and um, you know, uh, I would say call me whatever you want, just sorry to go southern on you, don't call me late for dinner. Um, And so that made me think and kind of wonder, um, because what, what Moshe actually said was, he said, when I used to go to, you know, Western Christian church before he moved back to Israel, um, <clears throat> he said uh, that he was casting out demons in Jesus' name, not Yeshua or Yehovah, um, Yeshua, uh, you know what he said, and it worked. But that's because God knew, you know, he knew in my heart who I was referring to. And I thought his talk was going to be really something to make me happy. And then came the but. But, and then, you know, a whole flow and tirade of, uh, of uh, how it's wrong to say this and whatever. And it's like, I just wanted to, like, grab him and go, Moshe, you're being a hypocrite. <laughs> but in a loving way, because I love him. And I would just say, well, do you realize what you just said? Like, can you back up your own video? for uh <clears throat> and oddly I pay attention to things like numbers and uh I don't believe in coincidence let's just put it that way and um but he actually said this in his video at 404 you know 4 minutes 4 seconds in and 404 is html code which means not found page not found uh, resource not found and it's like that's how I felt about what he said it's like you just found him and lost him all in the same moment Moshi uh, so it made me think if God looks upon a person's heart not the outward appearance what does that mean? If if we decide, being wise in our own eyes, to come up with these different ways to look at God, even have different names, and and then foolishly to determine that there's more than one God, so as to separate them by name, 
Um, what if we back up and before the words come out of our mouths and we think about what's in our hearts? You know, what's in a person's heart as they're calling out to God, right? And even the Greeks called it the unknown God. They knew that this, philosophically, this one particular God had to exist, but that they called him the unknown God because they didn't know his name. And so, if before those words come out of our mouths, and God is no, not looking at the outward appearance, but he looks at a man's heart, if what is in your heart is causing you to do all the things that God says that should be done, like Paul talks about in Romans uh, 2, 12 to 14, um, Aren't you serving the same God as other people? If their ways, the, their, you know, their law, like as Paul says, whoever by nature does the works of the law are then a law unto themselves. Aren't you then serving the same God? Like, is there more than... I, I see. I don't. I can't fathom it. There can only be one God, but we decide to separate them, and in some cases even to use the scriptures in a negative way instead of in a positive way to find the life that's within them, and instead we use them as like paper swords that are sound benign, but. Look at how much trouble our book has caused. And um, so that made me think of names. And when it says blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. When you look at the Lord in Isaiah 45, 7, it says that he does all things. Everything from light, light to darkness from peace to calamity and it does all things but so when you come in the name of the Lord you know what what does that mean doesn't everybody somehow come in the name of the Lord if the Lord does everything so I then have to look at it and say, well then, how do, how do we all relate to this? How do we encapsulate all of this and put it into one bag? And so it got me thinking about the name. And then, <clears throat> and of course, I try to look at fear as being a negative thing. Um, you know, people say, well, don't you fear God? And it's like, well, if I don't do anything wrong against God, then why should I fear God? Well, no, it's a different fear. It's a reverent fear. No, I think that's, call, you know, that's called slavery. That's called, I'm going to do what's right because I fear God. What happens if I do what's right because I love God and I don't fear God? and not as a burden, but that I want to please God. Which, which one of these two scenarios encapsulates uh, the, the Spirit of God being with that person? One person is running and hiding from God. 
the other person is saying, I love God and I need God. And God is good, <laughs> no matter what, no matter how it works out. Um, but on the name, right? Uh, the fact that he mentioned the name then made me think of the stone that will be given that has a name written on it that only the person who has the stone knows. And, and then I thought about the statue and how the rock struck, you know, the foot of the statue and filled the entire earth. If you want to talk about names and words, you have to remember that some of the names, actually all of the names that are given in Scripture, they have underlying symbolic meanings. Like the name Adam, for instance, means earth. And so if a stone was to strike and fill the entire earth, and we believe that that stone or that rock is the Lord Jesus, then is there more to thinking of that vision of that statue? Does that statue not represent a bunch of kingdoms but maybe kingdoms, potential kingdoms that are within even a man or a person. And so, taking this statue, looking at it from the feet all the way to the head, and that's actually, that's in Isaiah, isn't it? You, there are wounds and sores from the sole of the foot to the head. That's an Isaiah. Um, but if we look at this statue, sorry. <laughs> if we look at this statue, um, the feet are on the, on the earth and on the path. And when we took of the tree that had one kind of fruit on it, good and evil, yeah, the hypocrite tree, uh, this tree was the tree of life. And the path that we walk is our life and our existence. What happens if our toes are iron mixed with clay? It's literally iron is like God. Uh, it can't bend. Uh, it doesn't move. It doesn't change. It may rust, I suppose. <clears throat> and what is clay? Clay is what God forms. So these two things right there are, are like God and godliness, and then the other side as what God can do with it. But they don't mix, like as if to be good and evil. Depends on how we look at that, right? You can see that vision of those feet from two different perspectives. Two very, very different perspectives. You could see God's rule and the clay that he can make it. And then as you progress up the statue, conquering those kingdoms, you have the two pillars, the legs. And then the hip that was touched, where they joined together. And then was the, uh, you know, the struggle completed between God and man, the two pillars. And then his walk was affected. And then we get into the section of silver, where silver is what? Slavery. That was the part of the statue that the hands and the arms were connected to. Works. Marks on, on your hands, left and right and so on. And then ultimately progressing to what? The head of gold, where you're sealed, like the Jews, or marked, like the Antichrist. 
are two very different ways to look at our scripture. But when I see this stone with a name on it that nobody knows except the one who has it, and then that stone hits the earth, Adam, the man, and fills it. Is that stone maybe to say that it's a piece, your little piece of the kingdom, and that the name doesn't matter as long as you know it? What if that stone is your heart? Your heart could be that stone, but when God writes his name on it, however it is that he writes that name, it's the name that only you know, because only you know your own intentions, your inclination, your desires, the things that you intend to do. You know, man's heart is evil beyond all understanding, you know, wicked. Who can understand it? The person who owns it if they're being honest with themselves. If, if you don't know what it is that you're doing, what does that mean? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it could mean that you're crazy, but it could also mean that you're following God or that you're being driven by the Spirit. That's how Jesus said it. Those who are born of the Spirit, they don't know where it comes from or where it's going. Sounds scary, doesn't it? <clears throat> but then I started to think about this name and it being blotted out from the Book of Life. What if the Book of Life is somewhere where the name that you have isn't important? as what it is that your heart says that that name is. What song does your heart sing? Do you sing the song that only those who are chosen can sing? Or you know, does your heart sing a terrible song? Is it a dark song? Maybe crushing and depressing and even judgmental. Instead of using God's eyes to see the work that needs to be done, you see all the troubles and you have no hope and you have no faith and you don't have any love. What if those names that are blotted out are not your own personal name but because we all are coming in somebody's name there's only two masters so is the one master Satan and then the many are all the other names by which God can be known whose name do you come in Does God blot out the differences between those names so that they don't matter and just leaves a smudge in the book, reads it, and says, yeah, that's you, don't worry about it. We blotted that out. It doesn't matter. I hope my, the things I talk about aren't too hard to understand and that you can gain the perspective that I'm trying to uh, teach you about. Um, we have, uh, the, there are people that are angry at God and it's because the people of God aren't representing God in the way that God would be represented. Um, we believe that we're going to please God. And I'm not saying that there are no rules. Of course there are. 
but we believe that what pleases God is following rules that have no substance within them. It's, it's like um, giving your wife flowers just to give her flowers and lacking in love. They might be called roses, but if there's no love when you give them, then they're just thistles. Shalom.